Every year, sexual assaults take place at college campuses all across the country, but it's how they've been handled locally that prompted a special WNCT investigation. Our Josh Birch joining us now with what he found out about ECU's handling of sexual assaults. Josh. Ken, over the last year, we were contacted by multiple women who are or were students at ECU. They all said the same thing. ECU mishandled their sexual assault case and felt as if the university was trying to make the problem go away. WNCT investigated the issue, and this is what we found. Mismanagement, just one word some victims use to describe ECU's handling of sexual assault cases. Grace Turner says she was assaulted while at ECU as a student. It's one of the main reasons I decided uh, to transfer here. Is After being assaulted, Turner transferred to attend the all-girls school Meredith College in Raleigh. The experiences that I had with them ultimately was very troubling. Turner specifically remembers conversations with ECU's Dean of Students, Dr. Lynn Roeder. It was her that not only made me feel a little bit manipulated at times, um, but also was just very, very skillfully, in my opinion, um, working to sweep sexual assaults at ECU under the rug. Turner alleged Roeder reminded her she could withdraw from school on multiple instances, something she felt was a way to get the problem to disappear. Well, most likely academically, students will not do very well after a personal crisis. My role as the Dean of Students is to support them as they're here, and sometimes that means they need to leave the institution. There were also allegations of mishandling evidence and missing documentation, which were found during a 2017 internal audit. Auditors looked at a small sample of 14 cases, which revealed four out of the 14 had, quote, notable issues with the timeliness, accuracy, and completeness. WNCT asked ECU's Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, Virginia Hardy, about that audit. Do you all recognize that there have been at least some cases that have been mishandled by the university recently? I wouldn't say that they've been mishandled. I think that they have, there have been some missteps in the way. None of the, the, um, the outcomes were negatively impacted by those missteps. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think we mishandled them. In one case, auditors found there hadn't been a full investigation by the university. In August of 2017, that student emailed the UNC Board of Governors saying, quote, the fact that I am now a senior at ECU and I'm still fighting for justice from the mishandling of my case is very disappointing. That case was reopened by the university in the spring of 2016, but later was closed, citing lack of evidence. If we need to go back, we do go back. We don't just say, oh, we, we missed that, so it's too bad. ECU graduate Fiona Kay was assaulted within weeks of arriving to campus her freshman year. Her assaulter was found responsible by the university and suspended for a semester. But Kay said she was never notified he was back on campus until she ran into him. They said that they would let me know when he was back on campus just to kind of, you know, protect myself and keep myself safe. Kay says she threatened to sue ECU for mishandling her case and failing to keep her safe. That was until she received money. Has there ever been a payment to a student? who was sexually assaulted on campus? Not to make them go away. We had um, compensated a student who needed additional support outside of the university, yes. Both Roeder and Hardy said the pavement decay was very unusual, and in fact, the only time either could remember where a payment was made from ECU to a victim of sexual assault. Roeder says the $900 payment ECU made to Kay was for outside medical expenses, but Kay says she accepted that check because she was tired of fighting for justice in her case. They gave me a check and I thought it was fine. I, you know, I was a broke 19-year-old. I thought that would fix things. How do you respond to paying outside bills for one student, maybe not paying them for all? There are some other specific questions regarding the particulars of that compensation. I'd actually recommend that we talk with legal. Sexual assaults are challenging for universities across the country. For one, the sheer number of complaints filed versus the number of students eventually found responsible. From 2014 to 2016, NC State had 14 sexual assault investigations, with seven being found responsible. During that same time period at ECU, 23 sexual assault investigations took place, with 11 students being found responsible. We're gonna be very transparent. Tell us if you think this can work. Reporting in Greenville, Josh Birch, nine on your side. If you're interested in reading some of the documents mentioned in that piece, we put them all on our website, WNCT.com, tonight at 11 on WNCT, part two of our investigation into sexual assaults at ECU. 
Find out what the university is now doing to improve the process moving forward. Josh Birch, 9 on your side.